Hi, I'm really excited to be able to read for you today The Truth of Berenstein Bears. I think you're going to enjoy this. All right. It was a lazy sort of day in bear country. The air was so still that the leaves on the big tree house where the bear family lived were hardly rustling at all except in the beehive, where the bees were always busy. Nothing much seemed to be happening. It was a sort of day that sometimes leads to mischief, just kind of a lazy day. And you can see right there, brother and sister, inside the treehouse, brother and sister were sitting, not doing anything in particular, just kind of sitting there, thinking about what to do. And there, brother was holding his soccer ball. He'd become interested in soccer and had been outside practicing free kicks. The sister was over here relaxing in a chair, thinking about what to do next. See them? Neither Papa nor Mama Bear was around. Papa was in his workshop, on working on some furniture, and Mama was out shopping. I know what, said sister. Let's go gather some wild berries. Brother thought about that. You see him thinking about that? No, he said... Wild berries have too many thorns. And besides, the seeds get stuck in your teeth. And you know what? Wild berries do have a lot of thorns. And the seeds kind of do get stuck in your teeth. Well then, sister said, let's go out and twist each other up on the swing and see who gets the dizziest. You see how they twist the swing up and it spins around faster and faster. And brother said, no, he said, that's silly. Because besides, we did that yesterday. <laughs> Sister was becoming irritated and impatient with her brother. See, she's got that look on her face, doesn't she? My goodness, she complained. You don't want to do anything. All you want to do is sit there and hug that soccer ball. I think you must be in love with that soccer ball. <laughs> I'm not protested, brother. But I'll tell you something. I bet I can dribble the ball past you. Brother was a very good soccer player and a very good dribbler. But so was sister. And she said, I'm going to take that challenge. The next thing, the ne only the one who saw what was happening next besides the cubs was a mockingbird. You see the mockingbird right there? Who was perched on a twig outside the open window. Brother faced sister. The ball was on the floor between them. First brother made a move with his right foot. And then with his left foot, trying to trick sister out of position. And then as quick as a flash, he gave the ball a sharp kick with his right foot. It almost worked. You see what happened? But sister was there and she reached out with her knee and blocked the ball. You see the ball? He kicked it. It hit her knee. It came over here and hit this stand. It hit the chair. It hit the stool and it plopped over here. And it hit this lamp. It went into Mama's favorite lamp. And it fell to the floor with a crash. The mockingbird let out a screech and got out of there as fast as its wings could carry it. As it flew away, it saw Mama coming up the road, returning from the marketplace. Now, the Bear family had some rules in their family, just as every family does. One was... No eating honey in bed. Another one was no tracking mud on the clean floors. And another one was no ball playing in the house. Do you have rules at your house? I bet you do have rules at your house. You're not supposed to do this or that. Well, these are the rules at the bear house. What to do? Brother looked at sister. Sister looked at brother. They looked at the broken lamp and they listened in horror as Mama came up the steps and into the house. All Brother had time to do was, before Mama came into the room, was roll the ball behind Papa's chair. You see him kind of push it back there behind the chair. My lamp, cried Mama. What happened, she asked, looking in her cub's eyes. Tell me about it. The cubs looked into Mama's eyes and then they looked at each other. And then they begin to tell one of the biggest whoppers that has ever been told in bear country. You know what a whopper is, don't you? It is a big lie. They weren't going to tell the truth. They're not going to take the blame. 
It was a bird, began brother. Yes, added sister. A big purple bird with yellow feet. And green wing tips, tips added brother. And a funny looking red feather sticking out of the top, said sister as a finishing touch. As most things do, the purple bird, see, the purple bird whopper got bigger and bigger and bigger. And there they are telling the story of mama and kind of the bird flew in and hit the lamp. That's what they said. Yes, continued the cubs. And it flew in that window and zoomed around the room and knocked over the lamp. Mama bear was looking at the broken lamp with a sad expression on her face. And Papa bear came in from his shop. The bears began to tell Papa Bear the story of the big bird that flew in the window and broke the lamp. It was kind of harder to tell the second time. For one thing, they couldn't quite remember how they told it the first time. You've got me confused, said Papa. Was it a purple bird with green wingtips and yellow feet? Or a yellow bird with purple wingtips and green feet? <laughs> That's a completely different bird. Or... Was it a white bird with black spots like the soccer ball behind my easy chair? But the thing that made it hard the second time was how very sad Mama looked as she picked up the pieces of the broken lamp. Mama, we're really sorry about the lamp, said brother. Oh, yes, said sister, picking up the last piece and putting it in the dustpan. Oh, said Mama, I'm not worried about the lamp. We can always get another lamp, or we can glue this one back together. What I'm sad about is the thought that maybe, just maybe, my cubs, cubs, whom I've always trusted, aren't telling me the truth. And truth is not something you can put back together again. See, they're telling, she's telling them that. Both cubs started talking at once. It wasn't a bird, said sister. It was a soccer ball. And it was all my fault, said brother. No, it was just as much my fault, said sister. But they were both shouted down by the phone, which began to ring loudly. Here's a phone. This is the way phones used to look a long, long time ago. Nobody had cell phones back then. It was Grizzly Gran inviting the Bear family for a Sunday visit. Oh, Graham, said Mama. Oh, everything is just fine here in the treehouse. How is everything with you? But Mama protested, sister, after Mama had hung up the phone. You told Graham that everything was fine here, and that isn't really the truth. Oh, but it is, said Mama. You see, she's talking to the cubs. We've got two fine cubs who have just learned an important lesson about telling the truth. And what could be finer than that? Now let's help Papa glue the lamp back together. Let's see, Papa's got the lamp right there. He's taking it out to his shop. Nobody really expects cubs to be perfect. And from time to time, brother and sister did forget the rules. Brother ate honey in bed. Never do that. One time, sister tracked in some mud. See that? On the clean floor. And once or twice, brother and sister started to play ball in the house before they remembered not to. But they never, ever, ever again told a whopper. Because trust is one thing you can't put back together once it's broken. So this is a good lesson. Trust is important. So always tell the truth. Hope you had enjoyed the book.